Hello everyone, this is Mark Van Dwittering of the Brain Wagon blog, and today I thought I'd show you uh, some of the things I've been doing with the Nanode. Ken Boak of, uh, well, formerly the London Hack, well, maybe still with the London Hackerspace, but he's moved out here, uh, has uh, created these things called Nanodes. So this is an Arduino-compatible um, microcontroller board that also includes Ethernet, and this one's got wireless, and uh, it's really kind of a cool gadget. He gave me a couple of these when he was visiting San Francisco a little while ago. I actually have an older generation of this, which is the one I'm going to be showing you in this application uh, that uh, WickedDevices.com sells. My wife bought it for me as a kit for Christmas, and that works pretty cool. The new ones are really nice because they have the little uh, SD card slot. They're, they're really chock full of peripherals, and they're really quite inexpensive. Um, and I hope to see continued development of this platform because it's pretty cool. But uh, one of the things that's sort of weird about these is that they use uh, a microchip ENC28J60 Ethernet controller, which probably doesn't mean a whole lot to a lot of people, but they're not actually compatible with the existing Ethernet shields that we see. Ethernet shields are actually quite expensive. Um, they're, you know, approaching $40 usually. And uh, whereas this whole thing costs about $40, so um, with everything built in, so these are really good buy. I wanted to make good use of these, but some of the code isn't quite up to up to where I really, really would like to see it. Um, toward that end, though, I just thought I would dive in and try to make something do something with the ones I had on hand, and uh, so this video is is really about that. And I'm trying to do a whole bunch of different video setups. I've got actually three different cameras going today, so if this doesn't edit exactly right, you'll know uh, what the deal is. Okay, so here's the setup that I'm using. In the background here, I have a Linksys router, which is serving as a wireless bridge. The uh, our, uh, Nano that I got from Wicked Devices and assembled myself is sitting here. It's plugged into the Ethernet. So basically this is just to talk to my main router at home and this is just the Ethernet going into the uh, into the bridge there. And I've got uh, there's a programming cable and the USB to provide power. And in the foreground here I have a uh, setup that uh, uses three power transistors, three switching uh, MOSFETs actually, to drive a little bit of a um, RGB uh, LED strand. So this is exactly the setup that I've had in a previous video and also that uh, Lady Ada has uh, done in one of her tutorials. So um, so that's pretty much all there is to it. It's just the idea is that I'm going to be able to send Ethernet commands or actually HTTP commands to the uh, nanode and that these LEDs will respond as a result. And Without further ado, if I just, uh, well, I'll just sort of demo what this will look like. Hopefully this will all work. Hold on, why are we not working? Yeah, there we go, a little bit of a delay, but well, perhaps with the sunlight, you can't really see that this is now glowing red. <coughs> That's lame, hold on. Ah, here we go, red. And we can adjust that down. We could make them go green. We could add some blue in if we want. Okay, so how can we use this web server? Well, I've uh, programmed this uh, thing to automatically use DHCP to find an address on your local net and it'll assign itself an address. And if you had a serial port hooked up to it, you could actually find out what that number is. But I've actually configured mine to uh, my uh, router to automatically assign it a specific one, which you can do by telling it the MAC address. And I know that this is gonna be 192.168.1.112. And if you just access this, this will say that it's running web server remote, which is just what I call the sketch. 
and it's running on an anode and Arduino compatible thing, blah, blah, blah. It tells me where I got my inspiration from Jason Gillickson's REST Duino project. So the idea is that if you access um, URLs on the Arduino, or on the Nanode rather, I will say Arduino occasionally, I really mean Nanode, but you could, you, yeah, you just have to bear with me on that. Um, one of the things you can do is you can give it a slash and a pin number, and what it will do is it will tell you, it will configure that pin as if it were an input and will tell you what the state is. So if you had a switch hook to it, you could um, tell it to you know find out whether it's high or low just by accessing that. You can tell it what state to be in. This will actually doesn't return any data, it just sets, sets that pin high. Or you can alternatively send it a pulse width modulation uh, value and it will um, it will do it that way. And uh, okay, so uh, that seems cool. What can you do? Well, you can actually bring up a web server and uh, make some sliders, say using uh, something like jQuery, which is what I've done, and have a demo of that. So let's see how that works. And okay, here's uh, an actual setup. So I've created a small web page, and I've actually got a camera which is focused on my LED strip, which is streaming via Ustream. So the, there's nothing magical about that. That's just normal. I've got Ustream producer running in the background, and it's sending this uh, audio feedback out. And uh, But the web page that you're currently viewing is uh, running on brainwagon.tv, which is just some domain that I have routed to a local server. And what you can do is you can change these things and after a moment's pause from the e delay through Ustream mostly, you will see that these things change. So you can actually make this thing be more or less completely green. You can turn them back off. It only updates when you release the, uh, the command, so that's more or less off. And now you can go completely blue. So, well, so what have I learned through doing this? Well, first of all, it's not too hard to write a little web server that is capable of, of processing messages like this and doing events uh, in response to uh, things over the web. You can use things like jQuery uh, to produce really nice uh, interfaces, and that, that's kind of cool. Um, there are a few things that are kind of not so great about the setup. I'm using the EtherCard library, which is a pretty well-supported library, but it's really not very good at doing TCP IP. In particular, the kinds of web pages you can serve from it actually must be confined to the size of basically one TCP IP packet. It doesn't handle the fragment reassembly or whatever that's needed to do longer TCP IP streams. That's really, really unfortunate. I'd like to be able to host more oppressive web pages and stuff and have all this interface, which is currently running on my server and just talking to the Arduino, actually run on the Arduino itself. And that should be doable. There is a uh, web library called UIP, which can be uh, pressed into service to do this. It's a little more complicated. Um, I have blogged about some, uh, Maniac Bug had some really good uh, ideas about doing that but I couldn't quite figure that out. So I'll probably actually start shifting toward the UIP stuff. But in the meantime, I'll make this code available uh, online. You might be able to find it, adapt it, use it for something of your own. Uh, and as you can see, it's not terribly, uh, not too bad actually, even as it, as, it, uh, as it stands. So I hope this has been informative. I hope all the edits go well <laughs> and that this is in the complete jumble by the end. But uh, I really like the Nanode. It's a great platform. Uh, if you haven't seen one before, go to nanode.eu and look up and see what's going on. Uh, the most recent versions, I don't believe, are on sale in the U.S. at wickeddevice.com, but hopefully that will, will rectify itself shortly. And uh, there's other great stuff about them, like I say, micro SD card, uh, RF links. Um, they're really, really cool. So check them out. In the meantime, this has been Mark Van de Wettering, Blinking LEDs on the Brainwagon blog. Have a good one.